as the number of containers grow in an organization, it becomes really important to manage those containers efficiently for high availability, fault tolerance and high performance. But how would you do that? Well, Kubernetes to the rescue. Kubernetes is an open source container orchestration tool that provides you with these abilities, but you are still responsible for many administrative and operational tasks. Well, how would you tackle these problems? You do that with the help of GKE. GKE is Google Kubernetes Engine, which is a managed service for running your Kubernetes cluster. It empowers your cluster with a lot of capabilities so that you can use it the way it is intended to be used. It takes care of all your operational and administrative tasks so that you can focus on your core development. Like most of the GCP resources, Google Kubernetes engine can also be created using all those different methods like from the cloud shell, using gcloud commands, or using the API calls or from the cloud console itself. So as part of this demo, I'm going to create it from the cloud console. So let's hit search on GKE and Kubernetes engine. This is what we need. And if you are using this service for the first time, it will ask you to enable GKE API as well as compute engine API. So those needs to be enabled before you start using it. So because I've already used it before, that is why it's not showing me. Now I can hit create to create my first Kubernetes cluster. And it is showing me two options to create the cluster. One is autopilot, another one is standard. In autopilot GKE, Google takes care of all your node provisioning and administrative tasks. You don't have to worry about anything and you need to pay per resource that you use. But in standard Kubernetes cluster, you pay per node, you takes care of all your node provisioning and you set up auto scaling based on your workload. So I'll just select standard cluster so that we could see all other options that are available within GKE. So configure on that. And now the first thing is it's asking me to provide it a name. Let's call it test cluster. Then we select how we want this GKE cluster to be hosted, like whether zonal or regional. If we select zonal, we need to specify in which zone we need it. But if we want our cluster to be highly available and fault tolerant, we use the regional option where we select the region and it will deploy your Kubernetes cluster in multiple regions. Your control plane will also be hosted in multiple zones. But if you select zonal, your control plane will be hosted in one zone. If the underlying node is down, your cluster will be down, right? So choose this option wisely. Then you select your control plane version, whether you want to provide a specific version or you select the release channel. So these release channel, there are different releases like rapid channel, regular channel, stable channel. You could select the release type and select the version based on that. Now you could just uh, hit create over here to create your cluster with all the default settings or you can customize all these over here. So let's go to default pool. Over here, the first option is node pool. Node pool is nothing but collection of uh, different nodes or in this case, GCE virtual machines grouped together in a pool, right? For example, if you want to have your nodes created on Linux Ubuntu based system, and all of these should have, let's say 32 gigs of memory and uh, 12 vCPUs, then you create a node pool with that configuration and all the nodes that gets uh, created in that node pool will have the same type of resource configuration, right? So our first node pool is the default one. And here is the size of nodes. The number of nodes uh, it will have is three. Cluster autoscaler adds node whenever your workload require more nodes and it will delete the nodes if the resources are underutilized. Right, so it will take care of all your auto provisioning of nodes and you can specify minimum and maximum number of nodes as well. So they select this option for now and you can select your node location as well. For example, I have just uh, used a zonal cluster. That is why there is only one location selected, but you can change the behavior and then it will become a regional cluster. And then it says automatically upgrades node to next available version, we keep your node up to date to the cluster's control plane version. So whenever there is an upgrade to the control plane, your node will also be upgraded to the same version. And when we are using a release channel, these options are automatically enabled. 
and this takes care of your auto repair whenever there is a issue with the node it crashes or it changes the underlying host it will auto repair that node for you when there is a surge in your system so let's say when there is a maintenance activity such as cluster upgrade node upgrade then it will add additional nodes to the cluster so that your workload will not be impacted and the number of nodes it will add is one because we have specified max surge as one and max unavailable is zero that means there is at least one node running all the time to serve the traffic next is node so this is the configuration of your default node pool right image type and then machine type machine family and then boot disk type all those things that's part of your gc configuration if you go to networking you can specify the maximum number of ports you want per node right the default is 1110 for this particular version that we have selected but you can change this behavior as well then if we go to security it says use the compute engine default service account because your all the underlying nodes are nothing but gce vms right so it will use the gce vm default service account and you can specify your access type here is the metadata if you have to add any taints to the node or any labels that you would like to specify you can do that as well you can enable the maintenance window maintenance window will be the time frame or the timeline in which your scheduled maintenance activities such as cluster or node upgrade will be performed you can enable it and uh, you know provide a timeline like do it weekly at this time from this time to this time or if you do not select this then upgrades will be performed anytime it feels suitable then you can uh, enable enable vertical pod auto scaling vertical pod auto scaling is nothing but it will automatically resize your pod based on the cpu request and memory request and then uh, we have an option enable node auto provisioning that means it will create or delete more uh, node pools as the workload demands then um, this is the networking how the cluster will be created which subnet and whether it will be a private cluster or a public cluster if we choose a private cluster then only internal ip addresses will be assigned to pods and the nodes it will not be accessible outside from the control plane so this is the better choice if you are using it for your production or your organization workload right and you can enable the control plane access as well like only my organization cidr range would have access to this cluster so you can specify your cidr range as well like for this demo i'm just using the public cluster you can enable uh, workload identity or google groups are back all those things then this is the metadata field like we see in node pool this is cluster level metadata and features is if you want to enable cloud logging and monitoring by default that is enabled so let me just disable it so this will let you have some insights into the cluster all the logs and metrics will be captured and you could just query it from the google log explorer or matrix explorer and there are a lot more options some of them are in beta that means it is not ready for uh, the production recommended setup but you can still use it and once you verify everything everything looks great you hit on create all right as we can see that our cluster is ready now and it has three nodes total vcpu is six total memory is 12 gigs it says uh, low resource request because i haven't provisioned anything on this uh, cluster yet so i'll go inside my cluster by clicking over here nodes so it has one default node pool and these are the three nodes that are part of this default node pool if you would like to see any of these nodes you click on the node and it has these pods running so these are just the control plane workload that was provisioned with the cluster and all the details such as resource request so because we disabled the logs it is not enabled but you can enable it and it will be visible over here and this is the yaml for this particular node right it has all the details to enter into the cluster what you can do is go back to the cluster 
right? This is a test cluster and over here you see a button which is connect. Click over there. And basically this is the command that you would need to run to get inside the cluster. gcloud container cluster, get credential and then name of the cluster, zone and the project name. Right? Either you could copy it or run it directly in the cloud shell from here. So let's do that. Okay, I'm inside my cloud shell and this command was pasted for me automatically. So I'll just have to hit enter and it will ask me to authorize it. Hit authorize. And I'm logged in. So let's clear the screen. Let's clear the screen and run a kubectl get pods. It says no resources found because it is default namespace. So let me provide the namespace as cube system. Right, these are all the pods that are running inside this cluster. Now let's see how to perform a test deployment of a sample nginx image. So I'll go over here on the three dots and I'll click upload. I have a YAML file already created in my local machine. So choose file and I'll select the file right, and hit upload. This file will be uploaded in my cloud shell. So here if I do an ls over here and nginx yaml, maybe I need to replace the name nginx.yaml. Let's do a vi on that now. And this is my deployment yaml. So it has two replicas of nginx image and it will be using 1.14.2 and running on container port 80. Right. I'll just clear it out and now we can run kubectl. Let me clear the screen first. Now we can run kubectl apply hyphen f and nginx.yaml file to apply the deployment. Right. It says uh, deployment created. Let's do a kubectl get deploy and it is updated all the pods are up and running so if we go back to our cluster and go inside the workload you will see our nginx deployment is running if we click on that you can see other details like these are the two managed pods and it is not exposing any service so that is it running nginx container just one container per pod and over here are the details and events logs we have disabled it already and over here you see the yaml file that we have just used it will also have some metadata because we have deployed it now when we want to update the deployment what we can do is like from here as well we click and edit the deployment you know just make the changes over here and hit save or we can do it from the cloud shell itself like kubectl edit deploy nginx um, it was nginx deployment right. so you can make the changes and save the file it will be done let's update the replica from two to three and save the file. Once you do that, it says deployment edited. And now if we go back to workload and just wait for a couple of seconds, hit refresh and you see three pods are there. The changes will be effective immediately. Right. So this is how you can update your uh, deployment as well. Now uh, there'll be a time when you have more than one cluster running and you would want to set a default cluster. So to do that, let me just exit from this cloud shell and open a new shell now and then you run this command gcloud config set container slash cluster and the name of the cluster when you do that your default cluster container will be set to test cluster right this command is also really important from the exam point of view gcloud command we use when we need to create the cluster delete the cluster or interact with its configuration 
However, we use kubectl command when we need to interact with clusters, control plane or workload or any Kubernetes component. All right, time for the quick knowledge check of what we have learned so far. With respect to GKE, when do we use gcloud commands and when do we use kubectl commands? Autopilot GKE would give you more control over your nodes. Is that statement true or false? When do we add new node pools to the cluster? Cluster autoscaler would add more nodes to the cluster as the workload demands. Is that statement true or false? What is the difference between horizontal and vertical pod autoscaling? What is the gcloud command to set the default cluster? How to make sure that your GKE always run a stable and supported version of Kubernetes? What is the significance of max surcharge and max unavailable in rolling updates? And what are the major difference between public and private GKE cluster? All right, that's it for this video, guys. If you know the answer of these questions, let me know in the comment section below. Or if you have any difficulty understanding in any of the concepts that we have discussed so far, feel free to reach out and I will be more than happy to help you out. I hope you would have learned something out of it and this session was somewhat valuable to you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends, family and colleagues. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a good day.